Welcome back, everybody. In this lecture, we are going to talk about various fear and anxiety disorders. We'll start with GAD. We'll go over the diagnostic criteria, the best treatment modalities. Then we'll talk about panic disorders. We'll first define what constitutes a panic attack and then what criteria need to be met in order for a patient to actually be diagnosed with a panic disorder. And after that, we will look at some social anxiety disorders and the um, correct treatments. And then at the end, we will do some phobias. So let's dive in with GAD. Generalized anxiety disorder is a disorder that's characterized by excessive worry and anxiety. Excessive in this sense in this sense, means the patient's worrying about things in a manner which is really disproportionate to the actual threat or risk. So for example, in an average day, someone might be worried about uh, taking on a new task at work. Then they may be anxious about going to the dentist. They may be nervous that they might have a cavity. Um, and then they may worry that a package they ordered uh, isn't going to show up. Although, let's say the package contains nothing but a book. In this scenario, you can see that having constant anxiety would be seen as excessive worry. It's a scenario whereby they're, they're not waiting for, let's say, an insulin medication that they ran out of two days ago, um, and they're nervous that the package contains that life-saving medication. They're not nervous that they might not have enough money to pay for the dentist if they have a cavity. They're just worried in general. These are circumstances that should not be provoking the level of anxiety that this patient would be demonstrating. And this excessive anxiety and worry is going to be seen on most days than not for at least six months time in GAD. Now, the patient will also not have the ability to cope on their own. They can't manage the anxiety and the worry is occupying most of their thoughts. Now, finally, three or more of the following symptoms should also be involved more days than not. And that is a feeling of rest restlessness or edginess, easy fatigability, impaired concentration or moments where the mind sort of goes blank, uh, muscle tension or soreness, and difficulty sleeping. Now, treating GAD uh, is going to be with cognitive behavioral therapy and or with medication. Now, some of this is patient preference as some patients are hesitant to take medications, others, they're hesitant to go to therapy. And also based on what is, let's say, available financially to patients, medications are generally less expensive than therapy. So we really want to take into account all of these factors. Now, patients with very severe symptoms may be overwhelmed initially. And so to get the most out of therapy, starting medications earlier in those really severe cases might actually be more appropriate. Now, when it comes to the first line pharmacotherapy, that's going to be SSRIs. So sertraline, citalopram, escitalopram, uh, paroxetine, fluoxetine. We can also use SNRIs like venlafaxine or duloxetine. If there's no improvement seen on medication after, let's say, four to six weeks, we can change to a different SSRI or SNRI. And if only partial improvements are seen, then we can add busperone on top of that. All right, let's move on to uh, panic attack. Panic attacks are very acute manifestations of anxiety. And these are discrete episodes of really intense fear and anxiety with an abrupt initiation that peaks within minutes. Now, panic disorder, which we'll get to in just a moment, is characterized by panic attacks. But patients can have panic attacks as part of other anxiety disorders. Having one panic attack is not diagnostic of panic disorder. It's really important to keep that in mind. A lot of students sort of mix that up. So to be diagnosed with a panic attack, the patient will have, as I mentioned, an intense, abrupt initiation of fear or discomfort that peaks within a couple minutes with the presence of at least four of the following symptoms, which we can remember with the mnemonic, students to fear three Cs. And these symptoms include sweating, trembling, unsteadiness, which might be also described as dizziness or lightheadedness, uh, depersonalization or derealization, excessive heart rate or palpitations, uh, nausea or abdominal distress, tingling or numbness, shortness of breath or uh, smothering. Uh, the two fears stands for fear of losing control or going crazy and fear of dying. And then finally, the three C's means chest pain, uh, chills or excessive warmth. And the last C is a choking sensation. Okay, so those are your criteria. You want four or more of those for a panic attack diagnosis. Panic disorders diagnosed when patients experience recurring unexpected panic attacks. 
okay? They will have at least one or more panic attacks that are followed by at least one month of either, either persistent worry about having additional panic attacks or by the development of maladaptive behaviors related to that panic attack. So for example, they might avoid going to certain locations or taking on certain tasks that triggered a prior panic attack. And as with most psych disorders, you want to make sure you rule out substance abuse or any other medical condition that could be causing these symptoms, okay? That's important before we make a diagnosis of panic disorder. Now, treating panic disorder is going to include initial management with either CBT or pharmacotherapy. The first line medication is an SSRI. And if there's no uh, response, we can try an alternative SSRI. Now, if there's only partial response, we can actually add a benzodiazepine. But the caveat here, and you want to make sure you're very careful on your CK, is we only offer the benzo if the patient doesn't have a history of substance abuse or use disorder. Typically, on your CK, pick an SSRI. Never pick benzos first. All right, let's move on to social anxiety disorder. This is characterized by patients having significant distress or impaired functioning due to a fear of being scrutinized by other people. Now, activities and interactions, which are frequently identified by patients with social anxiety disorder, are going to include things like public speaking, having to meet new people or unattend uh, events where there's unfamiliar people, or even just being observed by people when you're eating or drinking. Now, the patient fears that they will act in a way that will cause them embarrassment, cause them rejection, or offense to others. Now, the social situations nearly always cause this fear or this anxiety. So this isn't something where it's like hey, you're meeting your, your uh, romantic partner's parents for the first time and you're nervous. That wouldn't be a, a social uh, situation uh, where you're experiencing social anxiety. It would be more along the lines of you avoid literally every single social gathering because you don't know who's going to be there and you're worried about all of these criteria I mentioned. Now, patients will typically admit to either avoiding social situations which provoke this anxiety or they still attend, but they are just plagued by extreme fear or anxiety throughout the entire time. Again, remember, this fear is disproportionate. So this is just to emphasize that this is a maladaptive trait. Most people will feel some feelings of anxiety at times in social situations, especially if they don't uh, know anybody. But this is a disproportionate anxiety or a disproportionate fear response. Okay, the fear, the anxiety, or the avoidance here has to be for six or more months and cause clinically significant distress or impairment to your patient. And finally, as always, you always want to rule out substance use or any other medical condition um, that would better explain these symptoms before we diagnose someone with social anxiety disorder. Now, treatment of social anxiety disorder will include cognitive behavioral therapy or pharmacotherapy, and what do you think the first line medication will be? SSRIs. It could also be an SNRI, and if the patient sees no improvement, you want to switch them to a different SSRI. And if the patient only sees partial improvement with that first SSRI, or after we change to a different SSRI, at that point we can add a benzodiazepine, of course, as long as your patient has no history of substance abuse. All right, now let's talk about specific phobias. These are uh, phobias where there's a significant fear of a particular specifier that leads to avoidant behavior. Now, specifiers can be divided into different categories, like situational. That would include things like flying, being near animals. Uh, dogs are a common fear. Fear of medical procedures that would require you to see blood or be stuck by a needle. Fear of heights or other specific things. Now. The DSM criteria for a specific phobia includes the following. First, there's a, clinical, uh, there's a clinically significant fear or anxiety of a specifier. The specifier nearly always provokes immediate fear or anxiety. The actual threat that's posed by the specifier causes fear or anxiety out of proportion significantly to any danger that it actually poses. The duration of fear, anxiety, or avoidance is there for six or more months, and it causes, cli uh, it causes clinically significant distress or impairment. And the last one is that substance use or any other medical condition has to be excluded and this and, and is not a better explanation for the symptoms that your patient is experiencing. Okay, if all of that is met, we have a specific phobia. In treating a specific phobia is going to be with cognitive behavioral therapy, which includes exposure therapy. Exposing them to the thing that scares them is the only way we're going to get them over this. 
All right, let's do some content review questions. We've got a long one here, so I'll give you 20 seconds on the clock, but if you need more time, hit that pause button and then come on back. Your correct answer here is A. All right, next question. Another long one. I will give you 20 seconds on the clock, but hit that pause button if you need more time, and then come on back. Correct answer here is D, social anxiety disorder. All right, let's do one more question. 20 seconds on the clock. Hit that pause button if you need more time and then come on back. The correct answer here is B, panic attack. All right, that is the end of this lecture. I will see you guys on the next one.